Yo, what's up, what's up everyone? Mike Hill, the Wholesaling Titan here to talk to you about wholesaling real estate and flipping houses. Now, what I wanna to talk to you about today is a clause that you can add to your real estate contracts to protect yourself from a pretty common issue that can happen at closing. Uh, I was initially gonna give you just one clause, but I'm actually gonna give you two things. Uh, one, you can add to a contract when you are buying a house from a motivated seller, and the other, when you are selling to a cash buyer. So it's going to be a pretty short and sweet video, but uh, before I get to the actual language, let me preface this by saying oftentimes, you know, I get messages and questions from mentoring students and other wholesalers or aspiring wholesalers asking me what to do when they're kind of in a shitty situation. And I had a mentor who once told me that anytime you have a problem, it's very rare that the problem happened in that moment. And typically you messed up several steps before, meaning that you should have never arrived in that situation to begin with. So another metaphor I like says, you know, it's kind of like jumping out of a plane with no parachute and then asking how you can land safely. And so the point that I want to make here is that it is of the utmost importance that you put together your contracts in a proactive manner that's equipped to address some of the more common issues that you know you might face. Um, everything, just everything should be in writing, should be incredibly specific, uh, even to the point of overkill. You know, sometimes you'll see uh, REO is a great example. Uh, when the addendum comes, you'll see they actually restate and reword the same thing several times just so there's no ambiguity. You want everything to be very objective and just not open to interpretation whatsoever. Um, regardless of what verbal agreement or implications are made, you will always be held to what's actually written in your contract. So with that said, uh, here are the two things that I'm going to recommend that you put in your contract. So number one is going to be, again, when you're purchasing a property from a seller, there's going to be a space to write in your additional conditions. And you're going to say this, uh, property to be delivered free and clear from all liens, violations, and permit issues. If there exists any open or needed permits, seller shall at seller's sole expense close any and all permits, you know, violations, and cure any liens. And so here's why that's important. Um, having clean title is a prerequisite and contingency, and yes, there are exceptions and uh, exemptions, uh, but for flipping your deals in the vast majority of cases, should any title defect be uncovered, the closing agency or title company or attorney will work with all parties to cure, meaning correct, those issues. Now, in most cases, the deal remains intact and may simply require an extension of the closing date to deal with those issues. Uh, the purchase agreement will typically address terms with regard to title examination, the process of curing the title, timeline, buyer and seller responsibilities, etc. And here you can see an example from the Florida Board of Realtors approved purchase and sales agreement. So that's called the FAR bar here. And uh, I won't read the whole thing here, but if you take a look, it says things like, you know, how many days you have to review the title, what happens if there are any issues with title, uh, what the recourse is, how many days you have to cure the issue, uh, responsibilities as far as notifying the other party, what happens in the event that a resolution cannot be met that's satisfactory for both parties, etc. Uh, and then I go on below here to uh, give my explanation. So the takeaway here is that despite having a title defect, you can usually still keep the deal alive. You cure those defects, negotiate when necessary, meaning you know maybe the buyer will sign a hold harmless and um, accept with certain liens in exchange for a price reduction, but you're gonna ultimately close. And if the parties actually can't come to a mutual agreement, and this is, in my personal experience, pretty rare, because remember, you're dealing with motivated sellers, they need to sell, and then real estate investors who are accustomed to you know, getting good deals in exchange for solving problems. Uh, but there is often the option to mutually terminate the agreement without you know, financial loss or repercussions for either party. Now, when I began my wholesaling journey, I incorrectly assumed that the clauses regarding this free and clear title would apply to permits as well. A uh, quick recap, permit is basically approval from your local government to do work on a property. So an open or expired permit is when a permit has not been formally finalized and closed. So typically that's by means of a final inspection within a certain time period. And then once that time has lapsed, uh, for the permit to be closed by the issuing department, that's what's referred to as an open or expired permit. And permit issues and the fines associated with them, in addition to the work sometimes required to bring a property up to code, they can be costly. So, as I learned the hard way, a permit issue is not a title defect and therefore does not prevent the transfer of free and clear title. 
So now contracts vary or can be very ambiguous with regards to who is responsible for these permit issues. So if this is not addressed, you can easily be in a situation where both the seller and the buyer refuse to pay. So the seller is going to claim, hey, you agreed to purchase as is. Cash buyer is claiming, well, this was never disclosed and agreed upon. And yet you're contractually obligated to close upon receipt of clean title. Uh, in addition, I want you to keep in mind that your inspection period is your primary exit clause. So when it's written correctly, that means you can cancel your contract during that period if you find anything about the deal dis dissatisfactory. Uh, oftentimes, however, these permit issues are not discovered until after your inspection period is over. So what does that mean? It means you're still responsible for closing and you don't have a valid reason to cancel your agreement, which at minimum means you could forfeit your earnest money deposit. So without this clause, you can easily be put in a situation where you're required to close and your end buyer is not in agreement. So that means the deal can fall through, relationships can be soured, um, you may have to pay for the permit issues out of your profit just to get the deal done, you and or your buyer can lose any earnest money deposits, and or you can be sued for defaulting on your agreement. So hopefully you can see why I like to use that one. I learned this lesson the hard way, it cost me more than half of my wholesaling fee once, so yeah, it's a good one to add. Um, okay, so this next one's gonna be when we are selling a property. Now, if you're doing an assignment and using my assignment contract, this is already in there. Uh, if you don't have it, I highly recommend using it. I've used many in the past, and yes, they can work, uh, but the one I'm using now provides extra protections like the one I'm about to show you. I'll throw a link in the description where you can download it for free. So, uh, with this one, it says, if buyer fails to close for any reason, due to no fault of the seller and title is in place as agreed via contracts and addenda, buyer agrees that uh, deposit will be forfeited as liquidated damages and remitted to the seller without any further documentation or cancellation needing to be signed. Buyer also agrees to hold the escrow agent harmless from any and all claims arising out of liquidation of the deposit. And again, we have my explanation here and why this is important. So look, uh, if a buyer cancels a contract with a non-refundable deposit, the fund should ideally be released to you as the seller. I mean, after all, that's what the contract says, right? Well, unfortunately, there's the way things should be and uh, the way things actually work in the real world. So despite the non-refundable status of the deposit, many title companies still require the buyer to sign a separate agreement to release the funds. If the buyer refuses to give consent, they simply just continue to hold the funds in escrow. Sometimes the buyer want to, will want to negotiate with you for less than you're owed. Now, if the title company releases the funds prior to the buyer's written approval, they may face legal consequences from the buyer. And so understandably, they have to you know, look out for their own interests as well. But by having the buyer agree to release the funds beforehand, you can guarantee receipt of the earnest money deposit should the buyer fail to perform, meaning that you get paid no matter what. Um, and that's also, um, you know, if that does happen, you got to remember that you're liable for the deposit due to the seller. And that's why you always want to ask your buyer to put up a larger deposit than you owe the seller. So basically that means, let's say my contract with the seller requires a $1,000 deposit. I'm going to request a $5,000 deposit from my end buyer. Now, if that buyer doesn't close, I still owe the seller that $1,000, but I keep the buyer as $5,000 and then I net the four k all right, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you find that helpful. Um, if you did find those helpful, I highly, highly recommend you click the link in the description and grab my ebook where I have 35 more of these clauses that you can put into your contracts as well as the explanation as to why and when you'd want to use it. Um, that guide is called Ironclad Contract Clauses. Again, I'll drop the link in the description. But before you click it, uh, two very important things. Um, one, you don't need to use all of these and you wouldn't want to. Some of them are specific to certain situations. Uh, so a lot of times too many contingencies will scare a seller or a buyer. Uh, but again, I explain why and when they'd be appropriate to use. And second, I want to make the disclaimer that I am not a licensed attorney, not qualified to give legal advice. That's not what I'm doing here. Uh, contracts are legally binding. So if there's something you really don't understand, it's always recommended that you consult an attorney. I'm just showing you as a private investor and as a wholesaler, some of the clauses that I use in my personal real estate contracts when I'm flipping houses and then just sharing that knowledge. So with that said, if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments below. Um, last few things here. If you have any questions for me, you can also, again, slide in my DMs on Instagram at MikeHillTWT. I'm doing my best to personally answer all of your questions. Uh, really appreciate those follows as well. And I'm starting to do more live Q&A stuff and some IGTV videos that won't be available on YouTube. 
Uh, also, some more links I'm putting down here, um, information on real estate mentoring, wholesaling coaching, and also doing JV deals with me. Uh, actually, I had a student email me today, first deal done. Won't say the whole name, but Joe C. I did get your email today. Congratulations, brother. I'll be emailing you back in a bit. Definitely want to hear all the details. There's also going to be a link to my Calendly link where you can schedule a 100% free coaching call with me. Uh, those uh, do fill up really, really fast, so go check out. You can see my availability. Uh, or sign up for waitlist. Uh, also, link to my website to get some free downloads and contracts, videos that aren't on YouTube, stuff like that. Um, and other than that, please do keep the questions and comments, all that stuff rolling. That's where I come up with topics for these videos. Uh, I really love the levels of engagement, really appreciate that. And I think it's a lot more beneficial for both of us when I am answering questions that you actually want to know, that you're actually asking rather than what I think you might want to know. Uh, so with that said, I want to thank you so much again for joining me here. Uh, if you got value from this video, please do like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, really appreciate that. Helps the channel out a great deal as well as, you know, again, that uh, YouTube algorithm thing. And, uh, and remember to set up your bell notification so that you get notified every time I got a new video, which I will have some more for you soon. So again, thank you guys for joining me and I will see you on the next video. Peace.